evening everybody and how are we all doing today this is the sunday night live stream from the veg grower podcast and tonight we are discussing greenhouse gardening i want to know your tips tricks and personal experiences we'll get into that in just a moment let's just see if anybody is out there first of all so bally silly and a lot my man good evening all good evening to you hope you are well adrian is out there good evening to you Oracle is out there. What about, what about everyone and my friend Stuart Jackson over on the other outlet? Brilliant chat we had last week. Really pleased with last week's chat, it's got to be said. Just a pity we couldn't get growing questions gold at the Chelsea Flower Show. What an achievement. You could have just thrown the questions out there. They were there. We were asking for questions. There's never, uh, uh, there's always time for questions. Turbo Stream, good evening, Veg Podcasters. Won't be watching live today, Saturday and E after a funny time. I'm just, I'm fine just waiting results. I can't thank the NHS enough today. I hope you are okay, Turbo Stream. We're going to miss you, but make sure you look after yourself is the most important thing. Um, hope you are okay, buddy. Bally Silly, look after yourself, Turbo, indeed. Uh, Hargrave Gas, evening, everyone. I hope you've all had a good week. I hope you've had a good week, too. Um... Hargrave's brother also had a heart attack on Friday. He's pushing through. So, oh, seems a lot of health problems at the moment. Hope everyone is looking after themselves. Nicola, evening, Richard and all. Nice, it's still light outside. Indeed, it is. It was a little bit, as I came in, a little bit dark. But, you know, it's, it's, when did the clocks change? That's coming up soon, isn't it? So that'll soon be, make, was it spring forward so it'll be seven o'clock at this time so it will be late um philly spb hello everyone good evening to you muddy boots is out there hello all good evening to you dig well greetings and salutations my uh fellow gardeners good evening to you jen's garden adventures good evening to you anna jones good evening to you um who else have we got to the chili phil uh evening all look after yourself turbo uh what else have we got Stuart jackson over on facebook evening richard and veg army hope everyone is well andrew norris is out there good evening all um again much love going to turbo stream at the moment i uh, hope you are okay turbo um rebecca in the facebook group is saying good evening everyone good evening to you um <laughs> Um, yeah, Dick Muddy Beats is, is making a joke about Rick Van Man, indeed. Yes, Graham Arnold is out there, evening all, and Ian Suggett, good evening, Gross. Hello, Dad, hope you're okay. Um, David Williams is out there, hello, all, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, everyone from the Chilies, that's Chili Kate, good evening to you. Uh, Ernie is out there. Good evening, Richard and viewers. Watching and about to take a bath after spending the day cutting grass, shrubs and hedges. What a lovely day it was. Absolutely. What a lovely day it has been today in the garden. So, um, uh, so much fun. Ian Beddows, evening all watching, but uh, we're not staying much, still painting the kitchen. Well, fair enough. Making the most of the weather. Uh, Brian's Garden Polytunnel. Hi all. Good evening to you. And Amanda over on the Facebook group has joined as well. I think that's all caught up. Please do keep leaving your comments. So let's kick this conversation off. So what I first want to ask is, do you have a greenhouse or not? If you do have a greenhouse, just put in the comments, I have a greenhouse. Or if you don't, put I don't have a greenhouse in the comments. Now, I'm asking this because just to get an idea of the landscape, just to see if anybody, uh, if everybody, well, I know not everybody will have a greenhouse. Um, I consider myself very, very lucky that I have three. But for me, if you are serious about gardening, they are one of the most important things to have in a garden. Um, you could do without them, but they make life so much easier. Um, so straight away, yes, Rebecca is saying, I have a greenhouse. Excellent. Uh, Nicola says, I have one in bits to pot up. David Williams, one at home, two on the plot, like myself. Money bits, two greenhouses, one on the allotment, one in the garden. Jen says, I don't have a greenhouse yet. Key point there is yet. Uh, Oracle says, I have a greenhouse. Hargrave Gas, I've got my first ever greenhouse in August this year. So still trying to work out the best use 
for it. Um, um, I will come back to that a little bit later on, Turbo. And why I share a glass house. That's interesting. How does that work when you share a glass house, Anne? Just, that sounds quite interesting. Bally Celine, I, ha I don't have a greenhouse, sorry. Adrian says, I have three greenhouses all unused at present. Well, is there time to get them into use? Uh, Anna Jones says, I don't have a greenhouse. Chili Phil, I don't know greenhouse in the chili household. We do have a conservatory we can and do use for seedlings. Uh, Brian's Garden Polytunnel, I don't have a greenhouse, but my preference was always for wooden framed ones. You have a polytunnel, so I'll, I'll allow it for the polytunnel as well. Uh, not that I'm disallowing anyone, but I'm just trying to get a lay of land. Uh, Stuart, I have a greenhouse and a medium veggie pod, and at the score, I have the greenhouse polytunnel plus two veggie pods. And Amanda says, I have a partially constructed greenhouse at the plot, need to source the remaining glass for it, and for flimsy at home for seed sowing. I know what you mean by the flimsy ones, the, the cheap sort of under £100 ones that are like tents when they go up. I think that's what you're talking about. Anyway, so... What I'm seeing out there, most of you do actually have at least one greenhouse. Now, I've got three greenhouses. I've got the, the one at home, which is I've had for since we moved into this house, so seven, eight years. Um, I bought it pretty cheaply. I bought it brand new, but I use my Tesco club card points. And I think I paid something like £17 for it. Something really, really cheap. Full six foot by six foot greenhouse. Best thing I ever did. Down on the allotment, we've got Granddad's Greenhouse, which is eight foot by six foot, glass all the way round. Um, I've had that for a few years now. And then last year we added what I call Tim's Greenhouse, Tim being my step granddad, um, which is half built, half built at the moment because of a different size. I was cutting glass yesterday and ended up cutting my hand to shreds. It's weird size glass panels I have on that greenhouse. So normally most glass panels, as no doubt most of you know, are like two foot by two foot. This one is some are two foot by three foot, some are two foot by one foot. It's all over the place, the different size on Tim's greenhouse. Anyway, get away from the point. So uh, most of you do have a greenhouse. Now, Nicholas says, I have another greenhouse I'm going to collect, two times six by three poly greenhouses. Um uh, what else have we got? Um, Brian says, I don't have a polytunnel yet. Last one was knackered, waiting for a new one to be erected. Fair enough. Ah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and Adrian also says, I have two large cold frames also unused. So what do you, what are you, if you have a greenhouse, uh, would you like another one? Or if you don't have a greenhouse, would you like one? That's the next question I'm going to throw out there just to start this conversation or get this conversation going. Um, if you want a greenhouse, say I want a greenhouse. If you want another greenhouse, add I want another greenhouse. I'm pretty much predicting that everybody is going to be saying something along those lines. If you don't want a greenhouse, say I don't want a greenhouse. Um I'm predicting everybody is going to want another greenhouse. I certainly find that having three greenhouses uh, has proved, I mean, I've only got two functioning, shall we say. Um, the one at home is I'm using now more for starting seeds off and becoming the, the, the sort of growing area at home. Not so much for when the plants are bigger, like usually tomatoes or cucumbers. I'm not so much doing it for that, but the ones down on the allotment are going to be growing tomatoes cucumbers melons chilies etc etc in um some predicament with glass size on the greenhouse use polycarb until un, until able to find cut glass that's something i want to go well i'll talk about a bit later on actually david because I've, I've got that question uh no space for a greenhouse unfortunately but we've always had success with chilies without one we're fortunate enough to be on the south coast um nicola says i think already answered to do david says another greenhouse please indeed um we have had one gifted but before we could set it up the wind destroyed it so we have glass but no frame uh, the husband is planning on building a timber frame for me so i want a greenhouse indeed um rebecca says i've got to what well, we're probably like a third is <laughs> something about it isn't it uh, no greenhouse, but big polytunnel be better. 
Uh, greenhouse is 10 by 12, but I would love a bigger one. Um, Anna Jones says, would like a greenhouse, but prefer a cold frame. Interesting. Why would you prefer a cold frame? Is this due to space? Let us know in the comments. Stick with polycarb, says Digwell. It keeps the heating better. I'm going to get into that in a little moment, actually. Adrian, I have an 80-foot polytunnel unused as I don't have the sheeting. Um, Nicholas says, I've been looking to, in, to second-hand conservatory to use as a greenhouse. This is great to hear the different options that we have for if you don't have a greenhouse. Money Boots would like a larger greenhouse, but no room. I understand. Yeah, I mean, not everyone has a room. Again, a greenhouse is a bit of a luxury, but I think they are one of the best tools because they give us that chance um, to start seeds off a little bit earlier or extend the growing season, start earlier, run later, get more chance of getting certain things to produce, such as chilies and fruits. Um, Oh, 101 questions or 101 advantages over the, the greenhouses. And of course, in the summer, when they get warmer, that does better for many of the other plants. So next question I want to ask you guys, don't forget the phone line is open if you want to call in. And I will also add a call if you want to zap in, the link is up as well. But if you have a greenhouse or polytunnel, what is it made from? Is it glass? Is it polycarbonate? Is it the, I don't know quite what they called it with polytunnel, but let us know what it is made from as well. I am getting into something here that you're helping me develop. So um, there is a point to all, all these questions. Uh, right. Uh, where were we? Bally Cillian says, cost-wise, I couldn't afford the size I'd need. I'd have two poly tunnels, 16 foot by 10 foot and oh did is anybody else getting a bit of feedback i am from somewhere i'm not sure where um 10 10 and 12 by 18 foot let me just tweak that down slightly and see if that makes any different um oracle says sorry i have a greenhouse i don't want another mega poly tunnel fair enough fair enough uh, last poly tunnel was three by three. I wanted a bigger one, so I got a four meter by three meter. Excellent, excellent. Oracles is made of glass. Digwell says I'd have a larger one, but no room. My back garden is only 14 foot by 24 foot. So, understandably, when it comes to sizing, there are this is going to be the issue. And he says, I would like a greenhouse, but first we have to finish restoring our house another year or two, then landscape the garden, then have a greenhouse. I always do it the other way around, the garden first, then the house. Um, twin wall polycarbonate, but I wish it was triple wall. This is about the, the materials it's made out of. David Williams, one polycarb, one all glass, and one half and half at the moment. Adrian says two wooden and one metal greenhouse. Uh, Nicola, greenhouse glaze polytunnel, the nasty green, cheaper one, we will cover up with proper poly covering when it dies uh money boots polycarp also diffuses some better so less chance of burning plants and stuart my greenhouse is glass even the one at school is glass if i was to replace mine it would be polycarbonate david williams i couldn't cope without a greenhouse so now i'm asking these questions uh keep keep letting us know what you've got and what you are going to add but i'm asking these questions because i am debating now my greenhouse at home is metal frame, but with plastic sheeting. Now, these, I couldn't replace those sheets. They are specific for that particular greenhouse. Down on the allotment, again, metal frame with both of them, but they are currently made of glass. But the winter storms come along. Every winter, we, I have to, uh, first year with Tim's greenhouse, to be fair, but Grandad's greenhouse, I always have to end up replacing some of the glass panels. And I replaced the loads yesterday when I was down on the allotment. I've got the two triangles that I got cut out and trying to cut glass isn't easy. You know, I learned how to do it last year, haven't practiced it since. But last 
but I managed to, well, I was trying to cut the glass yesterday, and I ended up breaking more glass, so I gave up. But then, as I said with uh, Tim's greenhouse, the different sizes, at the moment, half of it is glass. And I'm debating whether it's worth uh, in not using glass and going for twin wall polycarbonate, because I think it may be more likely to survive the winter months with twin wall polycarbonate. My only fear was whether it would affect the structure of the greenhouse. Would it re weaken the greenhouse in its strength? That's what I'm holding back off. But I wanted to find out from you guys uh, if that how it works for you. And says, I used to have a poly greenhouse on my old lawn and loved it. Would have another for sure. Fantastic. Uh, Oracle says, years ago, you never needed a greenhouse. I remember them coming in. Now they have gas on owning windows, etc. Yeah, uh, gas opening windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they probably, World War II um, generation probably didn't have greenhouses. But, you know, they are such, I feel, so important. I got so much in the greenhouses over winter to protect them. It makes my life so much easier. Muddy Boots says Rhino greenhouses, 8x6 aluminium frame with single sheet for meal glazing. Um, so, yeah, Rhino greenhouses are one of the good makes. Anna Jones would prefer cold frame due to very exposed windy garden. Cold frame might fare better. Good question. That, you know, this is why I'm asking about twin wall polycarbonate and glass. Um, what it, and a cold frame, I've got. I have got a couple of cold frames that don't seem to survive, but yeah. David Williams, um, only problem with polycarb is finding a way to keep it in situ, but he goes on to say lots of clips and mastic type stuff. That's what I'm planning, actually. Uh, I was thinking with a glass of using mastic, but I'm thinking, again, going down the, tw the twin wall polycarbonate. Um, should be easy to fit, I think. I saw a Rhino greenhouse, but they are lovely, but blooming expensive. You pay for what you get, though. I, I, I say, and I always say, you pay for what you get. I mean, if you haven't got a greenhouse and you are looking for one, I highly recommend trawling through Facebook Marketplace. They are often given away for free. You may have to replace, replace some glass panels and usually have to go and dismantle it. But I think if you go and dismantle it, it makes it easier to pop them up. They generally come apart quite easy. The nuts and bolts don't seem to rust into place, but then they come apart easy. I try... I mean, I've got a van, so it's easy for me to transport them. But I try and take them in apart as least as possible. Not always the, easy to do, but we've done it many, many times now. Um, the dismantling and the taking apart or, and rebuilding it is the easy part. It's the glass that is the biggest problem. David says it's so easy to fit the twin wall polycarbonate. And Nicola says, I've seen an eBay, a double-sided tape for greenhouses i think that's um yeah i know what you're talking about i can't think what it does off the top of my head digwell says i use gorilla heavy duty grab adhesive to glue my twin wall polycarb sheets to the aluminum frames survived every storm for the last two years fantastic digwell that is exactly what i want to find out you know twin wall polycarbonate is seeming the way um to 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 go Nicholas says, I'm getting a six by eight free. Yes, need to dismantle it myself. So there you go. That's what I'm saying about if you haven't got a greenhouse, trawl through Facebook Marketplace. I'm sure you will find them. Usually people move in and into a new house, don't want the greenhouse, so they offer it for free. In fact, um, I don't know if anybody had heard of the bald builders, but they, they, or one of them bought a house recently and I saw them throwing this greenhouse into the skip and I nearly cried. It was so, so upsetting seeing that. So, yeah, um, glass twin wall polycarbonate, that's a question I'm asking. Um, what's going to be best? Now, next question I want to ask with this, what are you using your greenhouse for at the moment? What have you got in your greenhouse that warrants having a greenhouse so for me my greenhouse at home we are not using and i've spoken about this before we're not using any extra heating so no no um 
heated propagators, no grow lights. Uh, we don't heat our greenhouse. We are just doing it naturally. But we're not using any of those to start seeds off. So a lot of our seeds are actually indoors in our kitchen for some reason, because it's not much warmer indoors, to be honest. Our greenhouse has got our potatoes chitin. It's got our brassicas, our cauliflowers, our um, cabbages. We've got some keltus seedlings. These are all seedlings. Uh, we've got the onion seedlings. They're doing okay. Um, and then we've got pots on the ground, strawberry plot in, in hanging baskets, strawberry pot in pots, a banana tree, a peach tree, which is in there to protect it from um, uh, peach leaf curl. Um, oh, Christ, I'm trying to think. We've got dahlias in there. We've got Lots and lots of things going on inside that greenhouse to protect them at the moment. Um, Money Boots says, yes, they are quite expensive, but mine is also 10 years old and still like new. They are also very tough. The other shows three or four people on the roof talking about the rhino greenhouses. Just because, so like I said, you pay for what you get. You pay for what you get. But he said, just a thought when fitting polycarbonate instead of glass, could you use washers and self tappers to fix to the metal framing instead of clips? I don't see why you couldn't, um, but I would be worried about the structural strength of the, the greenhouse frame by doing that. That's my worry, but uh, if anybody's done it, let us know. Um, uh, they Digwell says done that for belt and braces, but not needed. So he has screwed his trimble polycarbonate down, but it's not really needed. Uh, the first Oracle says the first greenhouse was made from old windows and old back door. You felt you not sure. Well, yeah, again, this is a recycling in its finest, isn't it? Using old windows, old doors to build a greenhouse. I think that's a great idea. Um, Nigel Money Boots. Well, I'm just going for free for time being. Of that, the yeah, talking about the rhino things. Graham uh, built a wooden frame around a metal polytunnel frame, fitted the polycarbonate window and door, and fitted with a sheet from first year's tunnel. So, yeah, polycarbonate is obviously working for you in that circumstances as well. Now, uh David is saying cabbages, onions, shallots, it's never ending apart from the heat lovers this early. This is what he's got growing in his greenhouse. Oracle says, my greenhouse has nothing. The beds are top dressed for the growing season. So do you not have any benches or anything in your greenhouse to start the seeds off? Um, Digwell says, just aliums in mine plus some sp spuds chitting. Excellent. And Money Boots says, when disassembled, draw a little sketch and number each piece with some insulation tape. Insulation tape. Great idea. Yeah. Um, I've done so many of these greenhouses now. It, it, it's almost second nature. Uh, in, insulation tape. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Chili Kate. In our conservatory, we've got broad beans, cauliflower, leek, seedlings, and lemongrass. So Chili Kate is using the conservatory as her greenhouse for the time being. Great idea, though. Um, we don't we don't have a conservatory here and don't really want one because I would just fill it with junk. So, uh, but yeah, as a way, I had a photo from one of my supporting members last year, I think it was. I think I sent um, I sent some tomato seeds out in March, and he had sown his by May. They were the size of his conservatory. So, yeah, got to be a bit careful with conservatories that they do get quite warm. Brian's Garden Polytunnel says, years back, my granddad's greenhouse was built from an old window frames and did the job. I'd love I'd love to see those old window framed greenhouses. We've got a couple on our allotment. Uh, always a good sight. Money Boots has uh, seedlings in his, but also has to house all my tools as I do not have a shed. So lose quite a lot of growing space. I can't. Oh, I gr for me, a shed is an essential part of any allotment or greenhouse. I know, or um, a garden. Uh, I know some allotments don't allow sheds, which I just think is crazy. It's just such a uh, an ideal thing. 
but so that being said, when my shed got broken into and I couldn't get in and out, I did end up storing some tools in my greenhouse. Um, Anne Wright has overwintered pelargoniums, salvia cuttings, and a lemon tree. I've got a lemon tree in mine as well. Then summer veg seed growing, followed by melons, cucumbers, tomatoes, and peppers in pots. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Stuart Jackson, my greenhouse is has only got to overwinter plants. All my seedlings are in the spare room, but my plants will have to go to the greenhouse soon. Yep. I mean, uh, this is the trouble I have without using the heated propagators is that my windowsill, my kitchen windowsill particularly, is slowly becoming overrun with seedlings and the wife isn't happy. And the moment's not too bad, but March is when it's really going to start ramping up. I think I've got some tomatoes. I just pricked them out this week. I think it's still going to be a too cold in the greenhouse overnight to get them in the greenhouse just yet. So I'm waiting for them just to get a little bit bigger before they go into the greenhouse. Oracle, oh, cool. not Richard. That's what the window seals in the house for. The neighbours like it when Mellard is getting changed. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I always say that's what window seals are, are for. Um, Brian, I lost all my citrus plants when this plant disappeared. How annoying. How annoying. There's a lot of talk about citrus plants going on at the moment. I'm, I've got a citrus plant nursery near me that I'm going to go and have a chat to soon. Uh, so that might be a, a subject for the future as well. Money Boots says, Free Cycle is another site to look on if you're looking for a greenhouse. Quite a few get put on there when non-gardening people move into houses, exactly like Facebook Marketplace as well. I always forget about Free Cycle. I used to sign up to Free Cycle, and then they just stopped, and I, um, it never really carried on with it, to be, to be honest with you. Um, oh, Nigel, are you going on... Tuesday, what I remember as well. I know slightly <laughs> off topic there and cryptic for everyone else, but hopefully um, I'll see him on Tuesday. Um, David says, I use the, the window seal to start off alliums, cabbages, etc., but move them to the greenhouse as soon as possible. Soon clears up space. Yeah, I do exactly, well, I'm doing exactly the same. Trouble is my greenhouse is so full. That's why I needed to get the greenhouses on the allotment going so I can move some of the stuff down there. So, um, anybody else um, uh, who hasn't got a greenhouse or anybody who would like a greenhouse, has anybody got any tips or tricks that you could pass on or any questions or anything about a greenhouse now i know uh one of the things that is i feel is quite important with a greenhouse is trying to keep the outside and the inside for that matter clean so that light can get through one of the most important things is light um that, that's what a greenhouse is for um and when they get a bit dirty, a bit moss covered, a bit green, algae grown on it, they tend to let light, less light through. And that's when our plants can struggle. So I tend to use with my greenhouse at home, not so much on the allotment yet because I haven't had it for long enough. I tend to use a big old um, broom and just some clean water and just scrub it down i don't use soap or anything like that because i don't know why um i don't like using chemicals in my honest opinion but i like to give it a good scrub every year just to try and make sure that all that light will get through and then when we get into the summer months when it gets really hot really sunny um some people whitewash the inside out i can't be bothered with that i'll be honest with you i cannot be bothered with it because i'm close to the coast i get a bit of a, a cooling effect so i don't so much get the warmthness uh right dig well is saying what's happening tuesday it's a press event that um in london um uh have i um I'm not sure if I'm missing comments at times. Oh, cool. At the start of the growing season, set a smoke bomb off, then clean her out. Is that one of those fumigator uh, smoke bombs you're talking about to try and clear all the bugs and uh, spiders and things out? Um, again, I 
don't worry too much about that. Personally, I mean, if there's spiders in there, great, because they're going to eat, catch some of the flies and stuff, is my theory. But uh, uh, nothing wrong with that. Richard Golden, hello, buddy. Hope you are well. And Brian says, at the moment, I'm using two by three tier grow tents my wife bought me for Christmas. They were intended for use inside a polytunnel. I know the are those the the sort of shelves the, the the shelves that you put over a bit they go together a bit like a tent and they, they put a plastic cover over them. I've had a few of those in the past and I always find they get blown over really easily in the uh, uh, the winter months. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll quickly have a look at some of the photos that you guys have been sending in over this last week, and especially with the mission that we set last week uh, as a quick break. So have a look at these. Another chance to have a look at your photos that you have sent in to me this week. This week's mission was to find some bargains, and I've got to say you have all stepped up to the plate. There's a lot of bargains that can be found within the group. First of all, Anne sent me this information about a seed swap in Petersfield on a Sunday, last Sunday in March. Uh, this looks absolutely brilliant. If you are nearby, it might be worth going and checking it out. Now next, Chitty Kate has sent in this card. She bought some of these marrow fat peas from the supermarket, known to be for 250 pounds, which she has sold to make some She's also managed to buy four litres of vermiculite for £1.20, which is another absolute bargain it has to be said. Not sure where she got this from, I believe possibly a local permanent shop. Stuart Jackson has also shared this citrus deal from Thompson and Morgan. I do love some citrus trees, so I'm very, very tempted to get these myself. Then I realise I've already got but you can't turn up a good buy. She's also been growing at these pea shoots and was asking whether it's worth turning planting them outside. What do you guys think? Do you think it's worth planting them out or should we hold up for a little bit longer? I think they need to go with something for a bit yes. Next, Steve, aka Dig Rubbery Fingers, has had all this wood chip delivered to his family. An absolute bargain because it was free. It's not all for him, of course, it's for everybody on his allotment site, I'm sure, but that is a lot of wood chip that I would love to be able to use. He's also found this deal on for a garden collection, which he's thinking of growing and inspired by Stuart Jackson last week for charity. So very, very well done if you do do that. Now, Jenny has found this bargain from Home Bargains, a windowsill propagator set of five we all do love a propagator set, especially if it saves on money and perhaps in the plants. And this is what it looks like out of the box. Three little containers with lids that can be used for starting up seeds, growing the seedlings on, etc, etc. I think it is definitely worth looking at and something absolutely fantastic. She's also managed to get some of these bargain fruit trees. I'm a big fan of these fruit trees, I've got many of them over the years because they are just great and cheap to grow. They are bare rooted so they need quality pretty much straight away. Now we've spoken about seed storage before and it's decided little is one of the best things to use to seed your, store your seeds. This is Nicholas, this huge metal container in her garden. Talking of seeds, she's also came across these bargains in B&Q in the discount bin and she managed to grab quite a good collection, it's got to be said. I can see this carrot in there, there's some, um, I can't quite see them actually to be honest with you, but it's a good collection. And there's more coming up, cabbages, gherkins, uh, they look like foxtails and all the more. You've got those four right anyway, but great to see. Now, next is Andy, who's shared this rather interesting seed summary chart. It came from realseeds.com, but it gives you an idea of the temperature.
touches that they need to germinate and to grow. It certainly makes you think about sowing seeds at this time of year. Now finally, for a bit of comedy, Mark has added this. This is where we are in the full spring at the moment. Don't think it's too warm just yet. We still have the second winter coming. I say that, it's been an absolutely lovely day today. Well, there we go. That is this week's photos. Please do keep sharing your photos. Post them in our Facebook group. You can send them to me via direct message on social media or you can email me richard at the Oh, there we go. Sorry, I, I, I can... Couldn't, couldn't set that up quite right towards the end there. Lovely photos, everyone. Please do keep posting them. Some really good photos coming in at the moment, especially on the Facebook group. Um, I can't use them all. I mean, that was a nearly five-minute video, so I'm having to be a bit selective. But please, please do keep sharing your photos. We always love seeing them. And if you have enjoyed seeing those photos, somebody's just texting me. Who's texting me? Oh. Right, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, if you have enjoyed these photos and joined this live show, then please do give us a thumbs up, a like, a follow, a subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification so that you know when we go live. You need to make a little skit up for that. Um, Nicholas says they were long radishes, not carrots. I was when I was putting the video together, um, I could only see it in a tiny little screen like that, so that's why I was reading it off what I could see, and I thought in that they looked like radishes. It wasn't until I was watching the video back just now that I saw that they weren't carrots, they were radishes. Uh, Digwell says, too true, those shippers. Indeed, they were brilliant, those, those shipping containers. If you've got the room, I know um, Nicola's got that farm down in Cornwall, so she's very lucky to have the room. It's certainly something that I know, I, we can't do here, but it's all down to the room. Uh, Money Boots says, I use disinfectant to clean the glass and then use my wife's Karcher window vacuum to tidy up. Now, I saw this comment while watching those uh, those photos, and I was thinking to myself, this might give me an excuse to go get a Karcher window vacuum. Might might be able to persuade Amanda to spend the money so I can use it on the greenhouse, uh, as well as the windows. Then I remembered we have a window cleaner, so she probably won't go for it. But I think I, think I could persuade her. Um, I like the idea, though. I do like the idea of using a Karcher window cleaner. I use a steam cleaner a lot as well, actually. Um, but that's a lot of work if you're trying to clean a greenhouse to do it, use a steam cleaner. Um, <laughs> Nicholas is not ready for seeds to ship in container. Well, we, it made us laugh. It made us laugh anyway. It made us laugh indeed. So back to this greenhouse discussion. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm seeing everybody's comments. Sometimes I think they get a little lost. Has anybody out there ever had a glass greenhouse that they've then changed to twin wall polycarbonate? And did you lose any of the strength? Um, the, the question I am ask, asking because I want to find want to want to know if it's going to be safe to do on the allotment and if it's going to be more beneficial to do on the allotment um let me know in the comments if that is you now um where else can we go with the greenhouses so one of the things that i've been doing over the winter with the green I've, i wrote a load of notes out notes out and i've left them indoors but one of the things i've been doing over the winter with the greenhouses i've put this bit of uh wire going along the, the length of the greenhouse and into that I've been hanging up some of my hanging baskets you've probably seen them in previous videos into which I've got strawberry plants growing and chili plants which work really really well but I've had to make sure that I don't add too many hanging baskets the reason being what I noticed is that the the metal frame was starting to pull in from the weight of these hanging baskets it was a great uh, great idea if it was strong enough. So I have to be careful of that. Uh, Oracle says, who wears the trousers, Richard? I just do what I'm told. Millard is the boss. Exactly the same here. Exactly the same here. I, I do exactly what uh, Amanda says. And uh, David says, A bribery over persuasion, persuasion, Rich. I've just got to make sure it's worth 
worth her while for letting me do it, is all I say. Um, so a bit of feedback coming in there. The uh, I, Let me turn my phone on silent, but I had a feeling it was somebody. Apparently the uh, sound of the music was a bit loud for my voice. It's very difficult to judge. When I do it, when I pop them together, it sounds okay in my, my, my speakers, but that's a very different system. So thank you for that. I'll knock it down again next time. Nicola, my mum's old neighbour pot up bubble wrap in a green, glass greenhouse, left it up all the time in summer, acted as a shade in winter to reduce heat loss. No, Nicola, that's a very good point that you have raised. I, again, I'm on the south coast here, so I don't actually insulate my greenhouse in the winter months. I get away with it. At the moment, my greenhouse is about 20 degrees C during the day. Overnight, and this is a plastic greenhouse, remember, overnight it goes to about the same as what it is outside. So a bit of bubble wrap over the winter would probably help insulate that greenhouse a bit better but i've never bothered and it's never really steered me any wrong i've always got away with it uh but i know some of you guys who particularly who are farther up north you need that bubble wrap you need that extra protection um to make sure that your greenhouses or, or, or your plants aren't going to die how many of you actually do uh wrap your greenhouse in bubble wrap Oracle says, it's okay. Amanda told you you're not getting one through text messages. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right there. Probably right there. Um, sometimes she can hear me. If I leave my other computer on, she actually hears me. So I, I turned it off today. Digwell says, bubble wrap also stops a greenhouse from warming up in the winter. Yeah, it's 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 very... Insulation is very funny, isn't it? It can stop it from warming up, but it, then when it does warm up, it's holds the warmth for a little bit longer and then da david says i found that bubble wrap just traps the condensation that's something i'm worried about actually that's something i i i i have concerns about again not so much a problem with my greenhouse here at home but the glass that would lead it to excuse me excuse me sorry the glass sort of discoloring and getting dirty as well with the condensation uh brian says i rely on fleece that's what i rely on as well funnily enough just to throw some fleece so much easier to to uh apply that way isn't it and it does just as good a job and Stuart says my greenhouse is bubble wrap all the time keep it warm in the winter and shade in the summer excellent um all the time so that's somebody else that said about using it all the time um and Digwell says he also uses fleece too. Now, talking of shade in the summer, that's the other thing that people, as I said earlier, whitewashing the inside of a greenhouse to try and shade it out when, it, when we get into summer. It's not something I've ever really bothered with. I'll be honest, it's because it's a bit too much faff for my liking. Um, but I do tend to, during the summer, just crack the door open on the greenhouse just to let a bit of air in. I've contemplated some of those wax or gas um, opening that automatically open the, the louvers and the windows to let a bit of ventilation and cool it down in the summer. But I've heard mixed stories on whether they are any good. To be honest, I've never lost any plants through scorching or anything. So I feel feel the extra work isn't worth it for me i know uh N nigel muddy boots he uses um oh if, if assuming he still does anyway knit curtains during the summer that just simply clip up into place which i thought was a great idea because it's so easy then to install them Stuart jackson says when you use bubble wrap you have to remember to open the greenhouse door especially if you've got a heater in there i'm guessing as well um David Williams says polycarb doesn't need whitewashing. So there we go. And uh, Oracle says, how often do you change the bubble, Stuart? I thought the heat would have melted it. I guess, Stuart, how often do you have to change the bubbles or the bubble wrap? Uh, good question. Good question, actually. Would it melt? Let us know, Stuart, as from your experience. 
Chili Kate, can I ask a random question to Veg Army? Sat here unpacking the seed potatoes. I have more than I need for the length of row. What happens if I plant them closer together? So slightly off topic, um, but I if you plant them close together, what you will basically end up with smaller potatoes. Uh, you really want 30 centimetres to 45 centimetres between plants. And if you've got more than one uh, or if they're too close together, you just end up with smaller potatoes. Um, if you're looking for the like the big jacket potatoes, you really need 45 centimetres. Other than that, other than that, if they're all the same variety, then I cannot see any other problems. But we'll see um, see what everyone else says as well. Let's also come in handy on Naked Garden uh, Gardening Day. I don't. I, I won't be doing that here. I, I promise you that. Digwell says, those cheap DC throws in Ikea are good for covering delicates when it's cold. About one pound each. Great idea, actually. Great idea. Uh, it's all about, you know, the cost of living crisis at the moment. We're all trying to save a few quid. Uh, Nicola, smaller crop per plant. This is for uh, Chili Kate's question about smaller crops, basically. Um Money boots, a few on our site have gone from glass to poly based on the cost to replace. £5.50 for a two foot by two foot pane near me. It's about £6 for glass near me. I'm hoping that polycarbonate is going to be cheaper and also easier to fit. Uh, Brian says, I wouldn't plant them closer, Chili. Kate, I'd pot, in, pot the extra in pots. Good idea. That's a very good idea. And Chili Kate says, thank you. Sorry, sorry for being off topic. I don't mind it to, you, to be honest. If you ever have a question, this goes to everybody. If you ever have a question that is off topic, still ask it. I don't mind so as long as it's gardening related. It's the only thing. I don't mind going off topic as long as it's gardening related. I just want to make sure it's all... Um, uh, I basically, I come up with a topic so I, I know how to market these this show more than anything. But if you have a question, just throw it out there. We're not worried about that. Stuart says, it's the second year for my bubble wrap. So this year it will need replacing. At this point, I will give the greenhouse a really good clean. So did it not, uh, Oracle was asking if the bubble wrap melted in your greenhouse last year. I'm guessing it didn't. And we had a very hot year last year. So I'm very much guessing it didn't melt. Uh, um, David says to dig well when you say delicate so you're about naked gardening day again <laughs> oh, it's all about naked gardening day isn't it money boots also says to chili cake make it smaller crops but why not plant a few spares in buckets good idea you know buckets buckets seem to be the answer Digwell says to Chili Kate as well, I plant two in a 30 litre bucket. Can't get much closer than that. About two kilograms each tuber for main crops. So, yeah, there you go. There seems to be a lot of Chili Kate. Hope that helps. I'm hoping that we're going to come down and see your allotment at some point. Anyway, as I said earlier, um, hopefully, yeah, if you've got spares, plant them in buckets and grow them on. Then you can probably grow them at home or move them around. There we go. Um, muddy boots. I got my diesel heater for when the temperature drops. I have been thinking about getting a, a diesel heater, funnily enough, mainly for the camper van, but seeing as it can also be used in the greenhouse, I'm liking this idea. Um, don't they need 12 volt power though to keep them going, or are they as yours integral, uh, Nigel? I was going to talk about heaters in a minute as well, funny enough. Richard, just a question on potato spacings. How do the men that grow in buckets get such good crops? They're putting four seed spuds in a 30 litre bucket only inches apart. It's a very good question. I think my, my theory and my answer to this is because they're growing them in buckets, they're watering them more and they're feeding them more because it's easier to control. And they're also using fresh compost to get the really really good crops um but it i could be wrong on that i could be very wrong on that but that's my general understanding if they're planted too close together you get less potatoes per crop or smaller potatoes per crop i should say so when they are doing this whole thing that you say about in buckets how are they doing it i think it is just becomes down because they are being looked after and there's more nutrients in the soil 
Oracle asked about the bubble wrap melting, and Stuart Jackson says the bubble wrap didn't melt. I found cheap fleece falls apart after a season. That's true. As I said, as much as we like saving money and being bargain hunting, as set by the mission last year week by Stuart Jackson, cheap fleece is uh, where it's at. Um, uh, so going on there, uh, Nicholas says, I grew all my potatoes in 30 litre buckets. I used to grow all mine in buckets, now I grow them in the ground because of uh, convenience more than anything, to be honest. Oh, God, my greenhouse was sometimes over 50 degrees, the water and can was even soft. I had to lift it out, couldn't see bubble wrap lasting. Um, I've never had, I always leave my water and can inside my greenhouse, and I've never had it get that 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 cold or that hot that it's starting to melt so yeah um jd another bargain we were, we were uh, stuart last week set the mission for this week just gone to find a bargain uh just unpacked the desert marked up as four pound in bnq bucket and i paid one pound fifty from the allotment shop these bargains that you guys have been sharing have been fantastic <coughs> um Ballycillian. So Money Boots says to Ballycillian, only four tubers in pots for your first or seconds, then just two tubers for the main crops. They, that's how, that, yeah, that gives them a the big space. Generally speaking, the main crops are what you want to be the bigger potatoes anyway. Your first and, early, your first and second earlies are generally just the smaller ones anyway. Uh, Chili Phil, we grew spuds at home as well, already in drums from caper berries. That fits the bargain topic too, as the drums were free from work. Maybe I need to get more drums. Get more drums. Get more drums. We all like them. <laughs> Ian Benno's, <laughs> if we're going off topic, would you buy a DB5 or an E-Type? It's not garden related, to Ian. Um, but David says an E-Type and Chili Phil says neither. Um, I don't know what I would buy. Um, when you say four, it's actually two layers of two earlies and just two for the main. Two earlies, yeah, two two layers, yeah. Um, I get what you get what everyone's saying. And Belly said, I can't grow main crop, Nigel. Bly got them, Blight got them every year. That's a nightmare, isn't it, Blight? Um, got Bayless Auto Vents on the greenhouse. Yes, old carton from charity shops does a great job at shading. There you go. There you go. The auto vents is what I was thinking of adding to one of my greenhouses at some point as well. <laughs> Digwell says B and Q is a rip-off shop. Good job of not sponsored by B and Q, isn't it? Um, potatoes used in buckets only provide spuds on one level. That's why we pot another two spuds further up in the pot. So that great question there. It's got to be say. Um, Nicholas says, I use horse manure topped with spent compost, one dressing of blood, fish and bone, four spuds, earlies and second, two at 12 and six o'clock, then two and three and six a couple of inches up. That's how she plants her potato. That, this is what we're talking about, the two layers. So um, when I used to do this, I would fill up like half the bucket with compost, put in two potatoes at, as, uh, at opposite ends like that. Fill it up with to about three quarters full, then two potatoes like that, and then fill it up with the top. That that's how I used to do it. Um, and then don't forget the feed and everything else. Uh Oracle was asking Stuart what type of bubble wrap he uses, and Barry said, I always grow in pots, Steve, but you have me thinking about the challenge for bigger crops. Yeah. Um, and for Digwell recommends JBA blight guard as a way of stopping blight. Blight is a horrible thing, isn't it? I get it every year, especially on my tomatoes. And I know I move on to blight resistant varieties now just to try and make sure. Um, I know years ago, what was it? That copper Bordeaux mixture, wasn't it? And that got banned, which used to be a good way of preventing blight. I but it's been banned. I don't know why it was banned, because I always thought it was organic. Uh, right. We, I've got one... Um, blah, 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 let me give her words out. Grow along video. Let's get a grow along video. This one's a bit of a shorter video, but uh, we, we get the idea. <laughs> I 
guys, such a lovely day today. I thought I'd do the grow along outside. And this week, it was decided that we're going to grow basil. So I've got a quite a large pot because I'm only going to grow one pot of basil. I've got plenty of basil in various places, but just one pot and into which we're going to add some multi-purpose compost. So there's nothing special about this multi-purpose compost, although price of compost at the moment does seem to be going through the roof. Um, a whole other story that. So label, of course, as always, I label everything before I sow the seeds, just so I always know what is going on where. And then we're just gonna, these are the seeds, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Scatter those over. I'm gonna do these quite thickly actually, because I've got so many basil seeds that I wanna use up. And there we go, let's do a whole lot, there we go. There we go, and uh, we're just going to give this a very light cover in some extra compost. And then we will place this pot in our kitchen windowsill garden so it germinates, and that's generally where we need basil anyway. Still a bit cold for basil, but it's uh, certainly going to be a good one. Just tamping it down a little just to make sure that all those seeds are in with the surface. Now, uh, updates with the seeds that we've sown in the past. So onion seeds, I've started pricking those out into individual little uh, trainers. That should be good for the time being. Um, that's about it. That's all I've got to really update you with the ones from the past. Everything else is just slowly growing or not doing much or just slowly growing. So uh, I'll update you more as we go on throughout the year with all these grow alongs including this basil. Give it a go. Next week, if you can get hold of some, we're going to try growing ginger. So yes, that's basil growing. Next week is ginger. And we're going to, Wilkinson's sell some ginger that we're going to try and grow for the grow along. Now, the, the seeds that we've sown in the past, as I said, the onions that we did right at the very beginning of the year, they've been pricked out. The cauliflowers are soon going to be pricked out, I believe. Uh, the peas, the um, the parsley and everything else that we have sown isn't showing any signs of life, apart from the leeks, which are very much looking very, very young. If you've taken part in the grow along when we do or when we sow these seeds, let us know how your seeds are getting on. Um, now, Digwell says Bordeaux mix is organic, banned because of the use of copper in the soil. That's what I thought. I thought it was organic, but I never quite understood why it was banned when. Um, but there you go. I think he's the, I think this is the same subject used it on tomatoes too uh, so yeah blight always such a problem oh that might be the jbi jba blight guard he's talking about use it for tomatoes too um now stuart says i get my bubble wrap from a local garden center it's about 25 pound for the whole greenhouse yeah i can understand that uh, basically, main trouble is at allotments, some people plant and forget about while others care for their crops, hard to control diseases. Yeah, I mean, you've just got to make the most deal with it. You can't control anybody else. Just concentrate on your own thing. That's all I say with that for a mental point of view. Uh, Oracle says horticultural bubble wrap is bigger bubbles are meant to last longer than normal ones that's that's what we're talking yep uh money boot says 12 volt mains transformer but can use car battery and maybe a solar trickle charger uh for that's for the uh, diesel heater um that's handy to know as i said i'm looking to get one a, a portable one for when i go camping so i can also use it in the greenhouse over the winter as well uh three pound fifty for organics of uh, uh, yeah um, I think that's Rebecca. Ginger, great. Yeah, we're going to do ginger next week. Wilkinson sell ginger that you can plant, or you can, excuse me, go to a, a supermarket somewhere and buy it in um, ready to or off the shelf sort of thing. If you can find the right piece, and I'll have a look for it when I go to a supermarket, so it might be a cheaper way, and potentially we can grow that. You're looking for like a little, you've got the normal ginger tuber. 
and then sometimes it's got this white little knob on it, and that's the bit that we're looking for if you want to buy it. Um, Bally Cillian says, brilliant, just bought some ginger and haven't got a clue what to do. We'll do that next week then. Uh, Nicola, plenty of copper in my soil, natural, naturally post mining any area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David, totally off topic again, but save Scarlet Emperor runner bean seeds and use them as harrogate. Tasted them for the first time today. Absolutely lush. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, I've got so many beans that I want to grow this year. Uh, I keep saying it every year, and I just never seem to do as well as I hope with beans. Now, carrying on with this conversation on greenhouses inside the greenhouse how do you or how do you set your greenhouse up in in inside now my greenhouse at home what i've done i've got a, a path which is uh concrete slabs in the middle that runs down um not quite the whole length but most of a length and then i've surrounded that path with some decking boards and then i've put around that a load of compost and i add to that compost every year the idea being i can then plant into those beds when i start using the greenhouse for growing this is a greenhouse at home but what i've done over the years is that greenhouse has become more of a place to start seeds off i've put a potting bench in there with all the stuff i need to sow my seeds a water butt so that i've got a solar powered watering system in there um, and then i've got two shelving systems for my root trainers now, down on the allotment, my first granddad's greenhouse, I've uh, because the cooch grass and everything was so bad in there, I've got a shelf or, a, yeah, shelf, bench, whatever you might want to call it, along one side. And then I've got little or large plastic containers that are filled with compost. And I'm using Lowe's. Tim's greenhouse, when it is built, it's going to be grow bags. How do you set your greenhouses up to grow in? um stuart says i've grown ginger from the supermarket i was told it has to be hard to touch is that correct yes it, if it's soft it's been in storage for quite a while so hard to touch is what you are looking for uh money boots says recipes for bordeaux mix available on the internet so there you go you can you can make it yourself if you know where to look as i say we used to buy it but it got banned oh many years ago now wasn't it Bally Silly and Allotment Man. Richard, apart from the ginger, can you give us a list of what we need at hand for next week for the grow along? Okay, so, yeah, good good point. You need the ginger, you need some multi-purpose compost, and you need a container in which you're going to grow it in. You want to, I'll give you a quick, quick idea. You want to soak the ginger the night before. So it gets 24 hours just soaking in water so it rehydrates. Um. Now, I've got a picture from somebody, from one of my listeners who's talking about this ginger thing. She's grown her ginger for years inside storm lanterns on her windowsill because it's created like a mini greenhouse as well. That might be something to think about. I'll dig those photos out to show you next week. So really, really good, good idea. But yeah, you don't need anything other than multi-purpose compost and a pot. Um, <coughs> excuse me uncle says path down the middle two beds each side a bit like myself there we go let's talk about the setup of your greenhouses david says i use throwaway greenhouse shaving sh shaving shelving for seed sowing then remove when tomatoes chilies etc go in yeah, excellent excellent um i've been thinking of putting some sort of you know you can get these shelf brackets that you pull a lever and they fold down uh, I've been thinking about putting some of those in the greenhouses to make up for some of the extra space, but worried that the greenhouse frame might not be strong enough. Uh, ginger, a lovely plant with the extra bounty. It is a beautiful plant, I have to say. Um, I have the two chemicals, says Digwell, uh, to Muddy Boots, and Muddy Boots has given a look of shock. <laughs> Indeed. Stuart Jackson says, my greenhouse has shelves on both sides. One is for work and in the other side is where I put all the seedlings and plants to bring on. I was very lucky to be given the alley shelves. LD shelves, is that? I will do a video to show you for next week. Excellent, excellent. Now, 
sticking with this whole greenhouse conversation, last week, no, sorry, I, we mentioned earlier about those. I think it was, um, oh, um, uh, Brian, that's it. So uh, I forgot your name for a second there. Apologies. Uh, he mentioned about his shelving greenhouse. I've had those in the past. I want to mention those. I've had those in the past, but I've always found they get blown over. So I ended up having to put a load of weight in the bottom to try and stop them from getting blown over. If you haven't got a greenhouse and you're looking at getting one of those, loads of weight in the bottom so that it doesn't get blown over so easily. Um, nothing more annoying than your plants, your seedlings getting knocked over. I think it was also Rebecca on that note. Um, last year, she shared a photo of, and if I'm wrong, Rebecca, please correct me, shared a photo of her one getting knocked over by the cat as well and losing all the uh, seedlings and plants, which is so annoying. Um, and throwing that out there as a bit of a tip if you are are oh, looking at that sort of thing. Brian says, I am decking down to the greenhouse in the inside, wide enough on to turn my chair. Yeah, um, that's obviously quite a key feature. Uh, I can understand that. Uh, David is asking Muddy Boots for a recipe for onion barges, and Muddy Boots is saying speak to Digwell. Um, uh, onion barges are pretty easy to make, to be honest. So, Hopefully, Digwell is going to be able to explain it better than me. But my, when I've made onion barges, I've grated some onions. I've added a bit of herbs and spice, um, and then I think I added egg as well to bind it all together. Made them into balls and then just fried them. From memory, that's how I've how I've done it. Um, haven't made them for a while. And you give me a craving for onion barges now. Uh, yeah, it was, Rebecca, it was. I lost all my chilies this time last year from a cat knocking over one of those shelved systems. I'm, um, I'm not a fan of them for that very reason. Uh, but luckily, a hot year, so they did well in the end. Excellent. So all was not lost. But how annoying. This is why I'm not a fan, not just because of cats and other animals, but because there's also wind and other things that go on. That that seems to knock him over. <laughs> David says, I'm starved now. Yeah, I really fancy. I've had my dinner already as well. I've had the roast chicken. And now you're giving me a craving for onion barges. I'm not going to be popular when I go in. Stuart says, I've had many of the cheap mini plastic greenhouses. I lost two in storms. That's why I saved up and got a real greenhouse. Never looked back. Absolutely. Absolutely. My thoughts as well. Uh, even the cheap poly tunnels and i say that as the cheap ones you know the under 100 pounds one that you might buy from wilco's or somewhere um i've had not had much luck with those either if i was to have a poly tunnel i prefer greenhouses over poly tunnels but if i was to have a poly tunnel i would make sure i spent the money and got a decent one based on my experience anna jane says and tie the shelves to the frame with cable ties as they tip over easily in the greenhouses good idea Good idea as well. I didn't think about that, but that is a very, very good idea. It makes a lot of sense. Um, cable ties are cheap, so use them. Uh, Bally Cillian says, never mind anything else. Try Digwell steak and apple, steak and ale pie. Unbelievable. Um, I will try that. I would I would try that. And Digwell also comes back with add baking powder to the batter. Darn another secret gone i will try that as well dig well thank you um you're making me hungry i think Stuart jackson said who started talking about food i'm hungry now yeah we all are and dig well has now gone on to scotch pie oh making us very very hungry nicola my cat has totally torn the cover of one of the clear mini greenhouses got for free from our facebook marketplace will you shelving in the poly tunnel later this year yeah. yeah, this is the trouble. This is why I'm not a fan of them, but they are. that is circumstantial. Uh, mind you, I don't learn. I've got them in a conservatory bursting with plants again, says Rebecca. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the joy of it, isn't it? 
Uh, raised beds on weed fabric due to arsenic in the soil. This is Nicola's greenhouse setup. Indeedly, indeedly. Now we are, we've got about 20 minutes to go. So uh, let me set the mission for this coming week. So um, <laughs> uh, let me find the, where is the overlay? This is Richard's Veg Grower Army Challenge of the Week or Mission of the Week, as it should, excuse me, should be called. Um, let me get rid of that because that's been up there for long enough. One, one, there we go. So for this week, the mission that I want you to go and do is to, to, to sort of, we're coming into spring. And that's when we're going to get very, very busy with various things, March particularly. So throughout March, <laughs> I want to know what seeds you are going to be sowing throughout March and share that. I know we're about still be a week away from March next week, but I'm going to get throw that out there as a mission to work out what seeds you're going to be sowing throughout March and share those with us. A huge selection. Sometimes sowing seeds too early can pay off or it can be a bit of a nightmare, but I want to find out from everybody what seeds they're going to be sowing. And on that note, next week's live show, uh, I want to be discussing, or the idea of a topic is, what are going to be the gardening trends for 2023? What are your predictions for gardening trends throughout 2023? What do you think is going to be popular? What is going to be... Um, the thing that you're going to see a lot of now i'm bringing this up because i've said um earlier i'm going to an event on tuesday it's a, a press event for gardening media and the idea being we're going to go um the companies go there to try and get their products and the things that they sell into the media to be seen and it's a great way to sort of work out what the media is going to be happening in the future so uh that's that's going to be next week. David Williams is saying, stop already with the food. Yeah, I'm really hungry now. So um, lots, lots, lots to go on about. Money Mix says, I have two level fixed staging concrete floor with a central drain channel. Luck, lucky to have pot electricity in when I built it. Yeah, like, I, I, on my... I'm talking about electric i don't have electricity in my greenhouse i could easily pot it in but i don't feel i need light uh, need electricity in it. although i was thinking the other day i've got some lights in my shed on the allotment that i might bring these are solar powered lights those phillips ones of all the rage many years ago i might bring those back and pot those up in the greenhouse instead because i don't really go to the allotment when it's dark so yeah uh, Digwood says, I will need all 90 minutes to tell you my seeds. I'm sure, I'm sure, but uh, that's going to be the mission. I meant to say this at the start. I would like to thank everyone for the last week. It reminded me why I do my jobs. Thank you so much, Dave. No, Stuart, thank you so much for sharing with us last week. I've got to say, the um, Q&A did really well last week with Stuart Jackson. I'm going to try and get a Q&A every month. Uh, hopefully... Um, I've spoken to Digwell about this. Hopefully next month we're going to try and get Digwell. And I'm going to try and get a few more people. What Somebody in April who is in the audience, haven't asked him yet, so I'm not going to say any names just yet. But as we go on throughout, I want to get more and more people doing, like we did last week, a Q&A session, because that went down really, really well. Uh, Nigel has shared a chemical formula for something. Um, oh, my... My, my my elements are off tonight, so I can't quite work that out, but I will figure it out later. Oh, good. Going to have to go. Thanks, everyone. And my mate, Stuart Jackson. See you next week. Thanks so much, Oracle. Lovely to see you as always. And you take care, my friend. So, yeah. Yeah. So anybody else got anything they want to add to greenhouses, how they look after them, what they do with them, how they grow? Um and what I remember as well, I think I've already said this, but I'll say it again. Please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up and uh, follow and notifications so that you know when we go live. Um, 
Molly Bitch says Bordeaux mixture is that chemical symbol if you make it yourself. Um, we won't get into that because uh, chemistry, chemistry. <laughs> um, allotment 40 grams of each into two times. <laughs> this is talking about the Bordeaux mixture, which is banned. Bordeaux mixture is banned. Not allowed to use it. Uh, David Williams, isn't that Spanish, Digwell? Or the no, no, sorry, money, he says, talking about the Bordeaux mixture. Bordeaux was France, wasn't it? So it must have been a French invention, I'm guessing, a French creation. Maybe wrong, maybe wrong. I may be very, very wrong. Uh, right, let's fill out this these last few minutes. Has everyone heard the podcast that I put out on Monday with Charles Dowding? Really good podcast, I've got to say. <coughs> Excuse me. Really enjoyed chatting to Charles Dowding. Um, found out a lot about his kids' book, which I've I've read cover to cover a few times now. Um, probably doesn't say much about my reading level, does it, when I'm reading kids' book from cover to cover. But, yeah, absolutely brilliant book and really good chat with Charles Dowden on the on the podcast hopefully we're going to um, speak to him again in the future uh, really really happy with that I've got another book review coming up at some point in the future from another author which is a really another really good book as well um, what else did I want to say? What have I been up to this week? And you're going to hear more about on the podcast tomorrow. Been building our front driveway garden. This is something that you guys, we, we spoke about this on the live show, and you guys helped me come up with some ideas. And I've finally finished clearing out the privet bushes, and I've got loads of fruit bushes out there. But now they're out there, I think I need more. Um, that's actually a video uh, no, it's not a video. That's the main topic on Monday. So that's going to be a good one. And uh, I'm looking forward to growing it on. Um, what else have I been doing? What else have I been doing? Let's have a look at the comments first. Edwin says, the reason my greenhouses are unused is because of the missing glass, because of storms, etc., etc." Yeah, the, uh, I I know what exactly oh, I thought that was going to be the case. What I find... I often find on Facebook Marketplace, again, I keep coming back to Facebook Marketplace, but I'm sure FreeCycle is the same as well. They often do give away glass panels on there. And I try and, when I see them locally, I grab them and keep them in my shed just for such a time. But that's why I'm leaning more towards polycarbonate because I don't want them breaking all the time because it's, excuse me, they always break when you need them. They break during the winter, never in the summer. So, um I, I, yeah, you know what I mean? If, if they broke in the summer, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. They always break in the winter when they are doing the, the protection. Digwell says, Neem is banned, but we talk about it, LOL. So we talk about ne neem oil. Yes, we do talk about it, but technically, as a gardening media person, we're not allowed to recommend anything, and I get in trouble for this from time to time. We're not allowed to recommend anything that hasn't been recommended for use in a garden. So one of the things that I I talked about was brick dust in place of perlite. And uh, I got a telling off of that because it's not technically allowed for use, or it's not tested for use, although there are tests going on about it. Um, and it's the same with neem oil. It's got another use. So technically, you can't use it, but do with that information what you will. Um, <laughs> says, I'm still on volume six of Noddy and Big Ears, talking about the uh, the joke that we were having about uh, reading books. <laughs> um, uh, David says, anyone got the chemical makeup of onion barges? Yeah, onions. A uh, few herbs and spices, a bit of batter, and oil to fry them in. Uh, Digwell then says cancer concerns. Oh, what neem, neem is that, I'm guessing. Uh, Nicholas says Liz Laura got a new book out. First one was lovely reading. And she got two books out now. Um, I've, not, I've, I've seen them advertised, but uh, um, I, yeah, um, Charles Dowding's 
publishers contacted me. That's that's how I got Charles on the podcast. And the same with this other one I've got coming out. Uh, it's called the the, the the other book I've is called the Modern Victory Container Garden. A really good book. Um, there you go, David. 150 grams of flour, one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of paprika, coriander, and cumin, fennel seeds, a bunch of coriander, white onions, finely sliced. There you go. There you go. There it is. Um, but I thought polycarbonate was not as good. Well, this is what we've been asking today. Is polycarbonate as good? People seem to say it is just as good. <laughs> David says, love you to dig well. Uh, uh, Money Beats, James Fluid is another one. Where would we be without DEFRA? Yeah, James Fluid, we're not technically meant to use in the greenhouse or in the garden, are we? That's another one that is a bit of a no-no when people recommend it. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I have, I haven't got told off for that one, but I have said to you, or recommended using it. Although, like I say, I try not to use chemicals in this. I have it. Uh, Nicholas says, get Liz on. Oh, I'm hoping to do a bit of a tour in Wales at some point for the podcast. Um, I've been trying to do this for a couple of years and try and meet up with a few of the, the Welsh people who are growing in their gardens for that. So it could be a possibility if I can sort that out. Just got to, got to find the time. Stuart says, can I put a topic out there for the future? Crop rotation for or against? Thank you. Yes, you can put that out there. Um, I did have work out a few topics for the next few weeks, so I will squeeze that in somewhere. As I said, you're always welcome to add your own topics, your own uh, information for anything like this, because it certainly helps me. And don't forget, you know, set your own missions as well. Um and things like that at this point also you know if you do want to send in a video to be played in if you have a youtube channel and want to share a video or something i've, I've got no problem with advertising other video of the channels on this channel uh, but it, it, as long as it's garden related or gardening related i'm always happy to have a video that we can play in and uh, share um especially when we come into that time of year when plots are starting to look better and better i put a uh, an allotment video out the other day a bit of an allotment tour i was flying to drive over and i just thought it got it looks a mess and then i remembered it's february in the next couple of weeks that's going to start looking so much better as it springs into life so yeah if there's a video you want to share then please do Toby stream just checking in still waiting in an a and e a live still but bored and with a numb bum as the seats need more padding, don't they? I haven't been to hospital for a while, but uh, last time I was in there, those seats were very uncomfortable. I know exactly what you mean. Um, but Thomas, it's great to see you. I hope you are still doing okay. Just make sure you look after yourself is all I want to say. Uh, David says, a hazelnut, hazelnut in every bite. Is this talking about his onion body still? Um yeah, yeah, I've got a real craving for onion barges now. I've had my dinner. I've got, I'm, I've got, well, we've got some pudding. This is going to be an interesting pudding. I don't know if anybody has tried this before. We've got a lot of butternut squashes that obviously we've kept throughout the winter months. And they are, <coughs> excuse me, they are certainly, um, well, we basically turned one into a pudding. So it's slight, slightly, slightly off topic but related to food and i you're probably going to get hungry i don't know what you think of this recipe it's an interesting one we're going to find out what it tastes like in a minute but we've roasted a butternut squash let it cool enough that we could ha hold it and then peeled off the the skin and then cut the butternut squash into chunks and put it into a liquidizer we then melted four bars of chocolate and poured that melted chocolate into the liquidizer and then Turn the liquidizer on so you get this butternut squash and chocolate mix. Then we just pour that into a baking tray and let it cool. And that, in theory, should be our pudding. Butternut squash and chocolate. Interesting combination. Um, oh, hang on. A hazelnut in every bite. 
And then everyone's going topic, topic, topic. Hazel, ha hazelnut in every bite. What? Uh, what? What? Hargrave gas, squirrel poo. A hazelnut. In, is this a saying I've never heard of? Um, does anyone know why elephants have big ears? No idea. No idea. Have I missed something? Have I missed something? I was getting really confused with this topic. Oh, topic. Topic. Hazelnut and everybody with you. With you. With you. Sorry. I'm with you. Similar to marathon or sneakers, as they are now called. Um, yeah. Got you. Got you. Sorry. That took me a, a while. Noddy won't pay the ransom. What? Because Noddy won't pay the ransom. Was that was that an ever? I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm lost. I'm lost. Uh, the topic was a chocolate bar with hazelnuts. I do, yeah, I think top, I've seen topic. Um, but it's all these all these comments coming on about elephants with big ears and uh what out what out what out what was it? That, that's what was throwing me, so apologies for that. That that just completely uh, completely thrown me. As Stuart says, I should have used the word subject. Yeah, the talking, talking piece, the the conversation starter, um, the topic. <laughs> David is laughing his ass off right now. So you're not the only one. Uh, yeah, that completely threw me. You got me stumped there. They're always fun, isn't it, when that happens? Um, topic: a hazelnut in a free bite. I'm, as I said, I don't watch much TV and I never really have. So this is completely throwing me. Margaret, it's the old advert for Topic Chocolate. The joke was the catchphrase. What's got hazelnut in every butt? But changed to what's got hazelnut in every bite? Squirrel shite. <laughs> with you, with you. Sorry that I never, well, I don't remember that advert at all. So that was, uh, I, I honestly thought you were talking about Squirrel poop being a hazelnut in every bite, a sane or something. So completely threw me there. I think we've got a squirrel. Well, we, we've had squirrels in the past, but I think we've got a squirrel who keeps burying stuff in my garden at the moment because uh, I keep finding things being buried. I'm pretty sure it's not any uh, of the four legged or rats, should we say. I'm pretty sure it's not that because uh, I've never seen any here, but we've definitely seen. Um, uh, squirrels so slightly slightly topic going on there anyway we are <coughs> excuse me coming to the end of this uh, this chat it's been a really good chat again um as i said uh talk, we're talking about greenhouses hope that's answered anybody's questions or given anybody some thought about what to do with their greenhouses i'm certainly thinking now to move to twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse instead of glass uh, the mission for the week is, uh, what did I say? It was, oh, um, work out what seeds you're going to be sowing throughout March. Uh, we will be back again next Sunday at 6, where we're going to be discussing the predictions for trends in 2023. And hopefully we will have a good laugh. Now, quickly, um, Nicola is asking, has anyone had any success growing mushrooms? So, um Oh, we're coming to the end. So save that for next week, Nicola. Save that for next week. Um, right. We let me set everything up so I can get out of here. Right, guys, you take care, and I will see you again next time.